Sergei Bahachuk. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, Hachu. Very good. Very good. Hachu. Or Hachu. I'll get it after two or three times. The fight goes that long. Hey, how would you like to have had Rashid Noy sing about Pacha for 10 rounds? Oh, well, that's one of the funniest I've ever had. I had a name, a guy, and we had to remember the name of HBO, um, Kill Nation. You want to make an impression. Our first fight tonight, we're going to see Sergei Bahachuk. He's from the Ukraine. He'll be taking on Yasmani Pedroso. Well, to wait. Pedroso, Miami, 28 years old. Take a look at these guys. You see Bahachuk's numbers. It's 2-0. Oh. The Bahachuk is 21. Pedroso 28, and a height and reach advantage for the Ukraine fighter. Big numbers in his advantage. He's able to use them in this fight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena and the mecca of boxing. Our opening bout this evening is scheduled for four rounds in the junior middleweight division. It's brought to you by K2 Promotions and presented by Cerveza Tecate, Born Bold, Chivas Regal, Hublot Luxury Watches. The interim chair is Ndidi Mase. Your timers this evening are Yvonne Williams and Lisandra Mendez. And Pedroso. And his opponent, boxing out of the red corner across the ring. He weighed in at 146.8 pounds. His record, two bouts, two victories. Both wins coming by way of knockout. Wearing white, trimmed with blue this evening and hailing from Venita, Ukraine. Now, Big Bear, California, please welcome Sergei El Flaco Boachu. Gentlemen, I've given you the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission with your interpreters. I remind you both now. Obey my commands, respect each other, and let's keep this strictly professional. Buena suerte. Okay, so let's see how they open the show here. Judge, are you ready? Bahachuk. Judge, you ready? With a lot more. Judge, you ready? Get back. Being moved quickly from the Time. Ukraine now into Big Bear, so he's the prospect. <laughs> Hachu is a long-range bomber, seems like. He, he uses his reach to his advantage. That's an amateur career, you can tell, out there in other countries, in the Ukraine, how the amateur system is. At what point in your career do you, you, know, you figure the adrenaline when you first start your career, you're going for knockouts early on, you're pumped up. And, at what point, how many fights do you think you have to settle down and, and, and work on things more? Well, the way it works is I realize something that's a negative. The more amateur a guy stays, sometimes can hurt him. But sometimes it helps him because what happens is as a fighter gets seasoned, they start making more mistakes. They start knowing too much in their brain. If you notice Roy Jones Jr., Lennox Lewis, they fought very amateuristic at times. They won fights. It's when you get pro and you start knowing what you're doing, you lay in a pocket, okay? Which means staying in the pocket in front of your opponent, then you take from the risk of being hit. I believe with Ukrainian fighters, uh, fighters from different countries, the amateur pedigree is a lot more extensive. So, just like the are watching today. And they always say that the fighters who come over, they like to see them start to bend more because they're straight up in many cases when they come. And the trainers work on that. Well, the, the biggest thing I told people years ago, the best thing that can happen to European fighters is they get American trainer. Now they are, okay? Here's a European fighter that trains in Big Bear. So obviously he's fought with American fighters. He's learned how to slip from the waist, okay? Dip punches, throw punches, as you see right now. Throw his punches, but he still goes straight back in the line. He needs to go to the side, either left or right. So you can come in fine, but you don't want to go straight back. The cardinal sin, which we see 
a lot of guys make. Yeah, the straight back, straight up and down, like most European fighters are. But now with the dominating boxing game, they've come to America, they figured out the game plan. I got the work ethic, but let's figure out the game. Don't go straight up, go left, go right, utilize the jab. They, they actually being a lot of American fighters this way. Bahachuk and Pedroza opening the show that will culminate in a pay-per-view card headlined by Gennady Golovkin and Daniel Jacobs. And this place will be electric a few hours from now. Of course, if you're going to go see the fights, say come right away see the first one see them all don't get to don't, don't come in with two fights to go get here and take in the flavor true very true the ambiance Box. Sergei Bohatchuk and Yasmani Pedroza opening the show here in New York. Welterweights. Yeah, these are not exactly big welterweights either. Um, I'm just seeing guys move a little bit more, their presence dominant. Uh, Bahachu uh, is following, instead of cutting the ring off right now. Um, pretty decent jab that he's throwing, but he needs to stick it to the authority. Because Pedroza is going to just walk through it. Like right here. He sets up the combination, Machu, and then he lets him run. Let Pedroza get away. Now Pedroza was stopped in his last fight. And if you're Machu, you have to know that. And how does that affect how you come out and react in certain situations? Well, the key is, the question mark is Bahachu, did he watch the videotape on how Pedroza was stopped? So is he trying to emulate, you got to remind him that he's not better than you, okay? Because the longer that Pedroza is in his fight, the more confident he becomes, and the more dangerous he becomes to Bahachu. The good right hands by both guys. See, there you go. Very dangerous. Pedroza landed some very good shots, okay, on Bahachu. Bahachu has got to be careful here. Everything comes off a jab. He throws a right hand. He doesn't come back to his jab. If you notice that, they go a right hand and no back to the jab. So he doesn't know his distance. These are the stages of a guy's career, young stages where he learns his distance. He smothers himself a little bit. He's a little too close to his opponent. Um, he's on top of his guy. These are range finding things that he needs to learn how to utilize the jab to keep your man at the extension of your jab. Because these things with the distance can be subtle. It could be a half a step, not even a full step. Yeah, boxing is a science. It's all angles, distance, um, time, time over distance equals speed. You got to be a mathematician here. Um, what's what's got to happen is that this is a learning process. Right Especially this early in career, two and zero. He has two knockouts. Uh, so right now he's learning that hey, not everybody who hits gonna lay down. Good wake up call for this for a fighter. Good body shot, the right hand by Machuk. Not considered a knockdown, but the message is effectively the same thing. is very durable. And he's doing some nice durable things in here. He's catching Machuk.
Bahatu. So there is overhand rights. They're more pointing by Bahatu. Bahatu's kicked on the right hand. He will come back to the jab and keep him back on balance. But he's landed over and over in time, and Pedroza has kept eating those right hands. Underway, Achuk and Pedroza. Box. It's, it's very funny watching the early stages of a guy's career because you're learning the process. Okay, uh, you can't fight every round the same way. Bahachu is learning right now what boxing is really, really, really about because he's hitting him, Pedroza, and he's not going anywhere. Pedroza is actually firing back. So it extends him to bring more to the table. Yes, well, this is a fight that he could go home, get examined where he needs to move on. Uh, the distance is number one. He smothered him like right there. He's too close. Okay, he's got to know how to keep his man at bay by utilizing the jab and catch his man at the end of the jab. Um, Pedroza is kind of awkward for him. So things like this make a better fight. Pedros is starting to weaken. Now, there's a potentially bad habit that Bahachu is developing with pushing down. And he's done that twice in the last round. It hasn't been called for. You talk about the early stages of the guy's career. The habits are important. Well, he's very good at pushing down at the elbow, and he's doing on a side that the referee can't catch him. <laughs> so it's very, it, it's good on what he's doing, he's putting the weight. He's trying to wear down the There he goes again. Puts the hammer out of the So the question, there you go. A big shot. This could be a decision for Ron Lipton if he gets up. Got the count right in front of him. Now he's up at eight. Except Pedroza was weakening. <laughs> Referee gives him the test. Yo. Go. So, a lot of time left still in this round. Yeah, Pedroza gets on his bicycle, trying to extend him a little bit, get to, try to get to the fourth round. We are knocked down in a four round fight. Mammoth. The second one, even more so, it ends the fight. Ryan Lipton has seen enough. A huge hook gets in. That's a good call. Get the medical people there. Sooner get right to that. No need to count. It was a wear down process. He wore down Pedroza. He wore Pedroza down. Uh, very good. The body shots, I do like that. He's got to work on keeping his distance. How would they can build on here? Yeah, they got, they got a blueprint. Then we take a look at the first knockdown, overhand right, crisp on the chin. Okay, uh, Joza, right there is getting that, that push down on the behind his neck for wearing the legs out of Joza. Here you see right check with the overhand right and the legs out of Joza. Here you see right check with the overhand right. Overhand right, looping around. It loops around as you take a look. He's backing up the jab. He's setting up the right hand. There it goes, right there. It's on the side of the face, and it sits down for Joseph. So End of the fight, you can see the punches coming. Okay, before I check. And you can see right there, the left hook which sat down for Joseph. And the fight was over. You see, he's setting it up, setting it up right there, setting it up with touching the jab. Then he goes, throws the jab, throws the jab, then he goes, the hook right there on the chin. And there go, Pedroza. Here we take a look, setting it up. Overhand right, jab, trying to get in the middle. Then go the hook. He set the hook up perfectly. Jab, right hand, and back there. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee in charge, Ron Lipton, calls for a halt to the action. Your official time, two minutes, 28 seconds in round number three. Your winner by TKO and still undefeated from Venita, Ukraine and Big Bear, California, 
Serhe El Flaco Bohaju. So from the Ukraine, a very good performance for this young fighter, and he has a lot to look forward to, and he opens up the card nicely here uh, on the Golovkin-Jacobs evening. Yeah, well, the red coats are coming, like I said, again. 